Thank you, Amy. Good morning, everyone. Um, it shouldn't be a dull day um, or dull three, three days. So we, we're going to start um, celebrating and uh, it's uh, Pedro's anniversary today. So um, I suppose we, we have to, to sing the traditional song. So happy birthday. Dear Pedro, happy birthday, dear Pedro. Happy <laughs> birthday, dear Pedro. Happy birthday, Pedro. So, apart Thank from the talk. voice, I think <laughs> I think uh, you deserve it. It's not only the tenth um, celebration of uh, Pierre Nurse. It's uh, it's also your tenth anniversary, I guess. Um, so let's um, proceed with the uh, the. The next uh, session, we um, we have first a, a keynote speech um, around the MS barometer. Um, you know that this year's EMSP conference uh, marks a milestone in in bridging the gap between the patients' community and the nursing community across Europe. By working together, we believe that a better understanding will lead to an improved care for the patients. And as a policy decision maker, um, our speaker um, knows certainly the value of evidence-based decision in adapting the healthcare system to the current reality, not only in her home country, Czechia, um, because our next speaker is the member of the European Parliament, the Honorable Konechna Katerina. And um, you have been forwarded the EMS barometers, so I, I guess that uh, it's, it's useless to show it to you. Um, so we will, we will now listen uh, remote um, in a recorded session to uh, MEP Koneshna Katerina. Yes, okay. Um, now, um, I've been told that we, we need a, a minute to solve the technical issue, which is not unusual in these times of um, remote connections, but uh, those who would have uh, questions, for instance, so far, um, can all, at all times, in fact, can post them in the chat box. It's, um, the chat box is extremely useful for us I would to, first... um, to follow the, um, the debates and, and uh, rebounds on them. Yes, are you ready? Okay, there we go. Dear colleagues, dear guests, first let me welcome you to EMSP annual conference. It's a great honor for me to be among you again. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic has dramatically exacerbated the challenges patients face. I hope that at the least in the EU, we are out of the hood. Now we are slowly reaching the stage where we should learn from the mistakes of the last two years. This conference should serve us, politicians, for this necessary reflection. Patients should be at the center of all health policies. Therefore, we have to heard their voice. I'm sure many of you know me. And I hope that see on me so the people from Czech Republic and so, so I, I need to say hello. I have a long standing interest in public health and patients' rights on the NV and BECA committees or as the ECDC's contact person. For five years before the pandemic, I was already actively involved in health policy making at the European level. Unfortunately, very often our recommendations just ended up in drawers and were not implemented at all. However, they are quite clearly defined and adopted, such as the access to medicine, 
vaccine hesitancy or e-health resolutions. We do not need to reinvent the wheel here. Rather, we should look at what has already been done before. Consequently, a lot of things we are dealing with now is not new for me. I have often been directly involved in a dealing with a pandemic, whether it was in the form of changing the EU legal framework to get a vaccine as quickly as possible, or today in building of the new EU's health union. In terms of the future deep deepening of European cooperation in the field of public health, I see the pandemic as a positive intervention from above. The COVID-19 crisis has pushed health higher on the agenda of the European Union, but also on the list of top concerns of our citizens. During this year, the first pillars have been laid in the construction of the European Union of Health, with the COVID-19 vaccine strategy, the strengthening of the ECDC and the EMA, the creation of the HERA and its incubator, and the new autonomous EU for Health program, the European Beeping Cancer Plan, which together with the pharmaceutical strategy for Europe start a decade of health and the research in Europe, reinforcing not only the economic, but also the social dimension of the European Union. Europe has shown great resilience and strength during the health crisis, but the weaknesses of our health system have also been exposed. In dealing with it, we are, for example, may have focused too much on the doctors and forgotten about the nurses and informal carriers. The current system of care for patients with multiple sclerosis has changed overnight. Patients suddenly found themselves in complete isolation, dependent only on the care of their relatives. Let's face it, the complete isolation of patients with multiple sclerosis was often not even necessary and was based solely on a lack of provided information. On the contrary, the isolation often worsened the health of patients instead of protecting them. I myself served in the COVID ward uh, at the hospital during the whole pandemic, and I survived it without any harm, even though I was eventually infected. Next time, we need to provide timely and most importantly, acute information to these patients to avoid this. Nurses have been moved to other hospital wards to fight the pandemic. They fear for their relatives whom they could infect as well as for their patients whom they could no longer care for. Therefore, the whole care was often left to informal carriers. As much as 80% of all care is indeed provided by families, friends, and neighborhoods. Unfortunately, informal carriers only received very limited targeted support during the crisis, reflection the lack of recognition and invisibility of informal carriers in our society. The EU must build on this experience and define common social standards for this vulnerable group whose role is so crucial and to demonstrably improve the lives of patients. We need to address this problem not only in the context of building the health union, but also in the context of in the action plan to implement the European Pillar of Social Rights. Action plan is a potential powerful tool to advance the rights of informal carriers who mostly remain in the blind spot of public policies. Addressing the diversity of carrier situation 
and needs it's important to design custom-made measures targeted at carriers while taking into account their perspective in a wide range of policy domains with the bearing of the their daily life. The coronavirus crisis has done nothing but excavated the challenges facing carriers. The adoption of the Work-Life Balance Directive and the establishment of a new rights to carry leave of five days per year represents a major breakthrough in the recognition of the informal care. However, the directive does not foresee any compensation and leaves it up to member states, which means that the situation of informal carriers varies drastically from country to country. This is something that we also need to address. Unfortunately, we are running into the same problem that we have in the area of public health, namely that the policy of social care and social security is only an additional competencies of the EU and that the member states have full control over them. Unfortunately, we cannot change this without a deeper reform of primary law here either. We also often face the huge lack of funding for public health policy at EU level. This is not an issue for the European institution, but primary for the member states, which refuse to contribute more money to the EU budget in this area. Yes, the EU for health program has been 10 times bigger than the previous health program. However, even this will not be enough to meet even half of its priorities. We have to, to look for more resources. Another case where we have completely forgotten about informal carriers, unlike to the personal in the health sector, is in the area of vaccination against COVID-19. In many member states, informal carriers have not been included as a priority group in vaccination at all, making their job and, more, and work more difficult again. This is another example that shows how necessary it is to ensure the status of these carriers into the EU law after this pandemic. As I said in the beginning, my goal in building the health union is to involve the patients as much as possible in decisions about their care. It would be certainly be very wise to involve other stakeholders such as carriers in this process because they are the ones who mediate between the system and the patient. Dear fellow patients, during the pandemic, both the EU and the member states made a number of mistakes because they were simply not prepared for something like this. It's now up to us politicians to ensure that these mistakes will not be repeated. This is all just beginning and there is a lot of work to be done. I hope that today's conference will help me understand more you need. Finally, I would like to thank you, all patients, their families, carriers and nurses for the way they have handed on the pandemic. Thank you very much, all. Well, thank you. Um, for those of you who some, sometimes have doubts about the efficiency um, and the effectiveness of members of the European Parliament, this was a strong, very strong statement from um, MEP Konesna. Um, we, we thank her and we will have the opportunity to thank her live uh, later in the day. 
Um, as you know, she um, she's a great supporter of the work of EMSP. She's a, a leading light on issues faced by people with MS, and and she is fearless, as you could hear in her advocacy. Uh, she's straightforward, and and her actions for the rights of people in Europe, and especially the Czech Republic, are remarkable. So uh, thank you very much. Now. I'm handing over to um, to Pedro, who will uh, present a couple of reflections on the video, linking it to the EMSP MS barometer. Pedro, it's yours. Thank you, Charles. As you say, it's a, it's a privilege to have uh, the the MAP uh, Katarina Konetsa and the, the the overview of what is uh, happening in, in Europe and the health and social systems and of course uh, uh, about MS uh, uh, about MS care uh, it's also a good opportunity to link here as you said the, with the MS barometer uh, that is also a privileged uh, overview of what is going on 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 MS on, in Europe the 2020 MS barometer highlights the huge disparities in MS care in Europe. Uh, we see issues in access, for example, to appropriate healthcare, uh, health professionals and social support for people with MS and their careers across the continent are shown there. Countries that fail to provide quality care uh, are failing their MS communities for sure. To quantify and benchmark, benchmark, benchmark sorry, performance, results of the MS barometer are scored, reinforcing the message that inadequate standards of care cannot and will not be accepted. Uh, there are some examples I want to share with you or, or about uh, these two slides. One of, uh, of the, the two are about the, the MS policies, uh, a score by countries, as you can see. Why MS policies are so important in MS care? Uh, uh, MS care, as you all know, has uh, need uh, an overall uh, approach, a multidisciplinary approach, uh, different uh, uh, stakeholders uh, also challenge the, 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 the disease. MS presents many complex policy challenges. Uh, it's a progressive neurodegenerative disease and, and you know, and also affects the young people uh, in a very challenged part of their lives and uh, has very different uh, faces. Uh, is the, the, the 1,000 different uh, faces uh, uh, disease. So uh, policies must, must uh, afford the, the, the overall approach uh, and it's shown that uh, the countries that are being developed, that has been developed the MS policies and also uh, policies about the neurodegenerative disease are better. Uh, the, the, the MS care and the quality of life has been improved much than the countries that have not uh, developed uh, this, uh, this MS policy. So this is important. Uh, in my case, uh, I am representing also Spain and we are uh, working with also with MS barometer uh, scores because we are not in a good position here. We are uh, we have a lack of social protections uh, and in the development uh, of uh, MS policy. For example, we have a neurodegenerative diseases policy, but not uh, enough uh, developed. So we are using this uh, as a, as a tool for advocacy also in our country. So uh, this was uh, one of the examples of the MS barometer affecting uh, MS care uh, regarding the MS policies. And the other one is about uh, the care delivery that Katarina Conecta was also talking in their speech. You can see the huge disparities uh, across Europe uh, in the scores of the different countries here. And uh, the importance highlights in the, in the slide I am sharing with you that uh, the importance of multidisciplinary approach of the of the of the treatment of, of the MS, the importance of the early diagnosis, for example, the personalized treatment, uh, and other uh, important uh, issues that are highlighted in the barometer. So uh, this, uh, I am inviting also you to to know much about this. If you are an, uh, an MS society, of course, to use an, uh, as an advocacy tool. And uh, if you are a messer, you have a mess, you can also see what is the situation in your country and what can be expected in, in a best uh, approach of the MS uh, care delivery. So that, I think that uh, it's, uh, it's all for, for me now uh, with this uh, an overall view of the MS barometer.
thank you Charles for the opportunity to share. Okay. Thank you very much, Pedro. Um, we have some time um, built in for questions. Um, um, we have uh, seven minutes for questions, so try to keep your your questions short um, to give the opportunity to everyone to, to raise the questions. I think we have a question from Shana Pizarro. Um, Shana, can you take the mic? No? No, she cannot take the mic. Okay. Um, I, I, before um, giving the floor to um, other people with questions, um, I have a statement. I have a mess and have just had delivery of my fourth antibody blood testing uh, kit. I'm giving blood to as many COVID research requests as possible. Every research with which asks. I think it's important to try and add to the understanding. Um, Pedro, would, would you have a comment on that? Or anyone else? Yeah, uh, I want also to want to link this question with the comment of uh, Katarina Konex about the, the access into the vaccination in, 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 COVID, uh, in COVID pandemic. Uh, this is not a score in the barometer for sure. Uh, it's a reflection of, of what is happening in the other domain zone in, in the barometer. And also the access to different, for example, as was asked, uh, uh, test blood or, or different treatments. Access treatment is, is a very different between, between countries. Uh, coming back to the vaccination uh, we have trying uh, we have tried to to push the, the to advocate for in at national uh, national level in, in the countries for for those knowing that uh, in the other countries uh, uh, people with MS or chronic disease patients uh, were uh, uh, being uh, being vaccinated before the the older population for example, in Spain, we have been waiting uh, until now, and we are getting vaccinated only by the with the criteria of the AIDS. So this is this is an example only, but uh, we have uh, several examples at the, as the question was showing us. Uh, so this MS barometer is so important for for that. Uh, I think we have the, the proof of what is happening. We have the scores of the countries. We have uh, the opportunity of saying the governments and saying uh, to all of the stakeholders uh, working for, for MS patients that things uh, should be improved in different countries. And we need to, to increase the level of MS care uh, on the whole Europe. Yeah, thank you, Pedro. I, uh, it, 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 it struck me in the in her statement, which, which I, I, I really want to say was, was very strong of um, Mrs. Koneshna. Um, she, she underlined, in fact, the, the difference, the diversity uh, in, in, within Europe um, in this pandemic, uh, but, but in general in, in healthcare. Um, do, do you expect, uh, or what could we do as the MSP to, to help um, MPs, members of parliament in our respective countries, and MEPs to uh, improve the situation and, and come to um, a, a better uh, support, in fact, of, of global actions? Because, indeed, we see a lot of differences and it's been it's been extremely difficult to come to a um, to a, a sort of common policy. Um, how, how would you see it? What, what can EMSP do to that? Of course, uh, one of the of the most important things to advocate is uh, having evidence, and the MS barometer uh, provides uh, the evidence and the data. I think we have. Uh, 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 move uh, forward in a very good way with with this with this data and the MS barometer to any way could help uh, the MS society but also the MEPs uh, to uh, use uh, 
this as, as an a proof of what is happening in Europe. We can talk about the huge disparities. We can uh, 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 talk about the test different um, personal testimonies, but I think this this uh, uh, tool, the barometer, and also the online tool we are launching uh, very soon with the different options to, to know what is happening uh, in Europe with data and with uh, this kind of graphics and scoring the countries, I think uh, is a perfect tool to, to improve the quality of life. So this is not only a survey, this is not only a study, and a study. this is a, a tool for improving the quality of life of people with MS in Europe. And this is I am very proud of the, the work that the MSP have been doing in this uh, and the possibilities for the future uh, improving the life of people. So your suggestion, Pedro, would be certainly to, um, to spread the message uh, as much as possible to our own yeah. MPs in our respective countries. Yeah, the data must uh, be used, must be used as an example, and the MEPs and politicians at national uh, national level in the countries and also, of course, at European level should know uh, the much the better the what is happening uh, with the, the result of the scores of the barometer. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, Pedro, thank you very much uh, for, for your contribution in this session. Um, I would like to thank our speaker again, but I will do it later in the day, as I said, when she will be with us, um, because I, it, it's one of the strongest statements I've heard from MEPs, um, who, who are we, we are very critical at times uh, against the, the the policy making by the by the European Union, but I think that she's she's an exemplary advocate of uh, of uh, what we could and should change to give a better quality of life to persons with MS. With this, I'm, um, I'm uh, suggesting to close this uh, session and um, ask our friend Andres to, to show his drawings. Okay. Thank you very much, Andres. And I hand over to Amy for the next session. Amy, are you there?